So if you run this, uh, you will see that it's exactly what we have in mind, right? So they're both different. They're both equal because we assigned them to um, line 33. And then line 37, I changed the value of S1 only. I did not touch S2 at all. But you can see that it actually affects S2 as well. And because they're pointing to the same memory address. <clears throat> and then say, oh, how do you know that's true, right? So there's a way to check. And you can check that by in here, if you were to add in here, um, if I add like the S1 here, after the S1, I just put another string, which is say dash, and then we'll put here, I put S1 dot hash code. Okay, so the hash code will return the, um, let's say the memory address of that object. If I copy that to the S2 as well, put S2 hash code. <clears throat> And if you do exactly the same to the above, I should just copy, um, yeah, just copy these hash code to the S1 here, and then the, the top one too. And then S2 hash code. Okay. So I just added the hash code to kind of show you that their memory addresses were different at first. And then, as you assign them, they should be the same. And see if that is true. Okay, so if you run this now, uh, you will see that you run for the first time. They have different memory addresses, right? S1 has its own because it's a different object location. And then after line 33, uh, assign them to the same one. So now they have the both point to uh, S1's memory address. And it stays like that to the rest of the uh, of the program, and so that's why you change the values. It actually affects both of them because they're just the same thing. It's like um, you're passing data through reference in Visual Basic, okay? And if you were to do that up here in the string uh, part, you you will see the same thing. You see that when I change it, I have different uh, different uh, hash code. Um, just to see that, we we'll just do one here really quick. Okay, to show that it actually has a different value. So, and let me comment these out. So, I guess for like string S1 is um, Apple. Okay, and if I print that out right now, I put. Um, <coughs> S1, let's put the hash code. So S1 dot hash code. Okay. And then I assign S1 to a different word, Java. If you print that again, you'll see that it's a different, it should be a different hash code. Because it's now pointing to a different object inside the constant pool. Right? And so when I run this, right, so you see that as S1, Apple has a different hash code. That's created that automatically by a JVM. And once I change that to a different word, Java has a different hash code. Okay. And if, if you were to like copies, uh, copy lines 45 and 46 twice, same one, and just reassigning Java to, to itself twice, you'll see that it will still have the same, oops, <clears throat> it still had the same hash code because even though you um, reassign it <clears throat> so Java is still floating inside the constant pool or hasn't been deleted yet by the garbage collector so you still point to the same uh, constant or, or the same object inside the constant pool okay. 
And <clears throat> how is that true? Well, what if you change um, S2, right? If I change S2, so if I say here S2 instead of S1, string S2 points to the word Java. And if I show S2's hash code, what do you think that's going to look like? <clears throat> I expect that to be the same as S1. Even though they are two separate variables, they have the same values, Java. And Java, if Java is inside the copy pool, then the hash code should be the same. Right? And you see that they both have the same hash code. Okay? So just to prove to you that uh, inside the copy pool, you have the word Java on there and S2, S1 are two separate variables, but they point to the same constant uh, object inside the pool.